I've got the last story tonight. Lindy, you are lazy. You are disorganized and distracted. You seethe with envy. You're impatient. And you are so judgmental. What could I say? She was right. I was all those things. I knew it. My journal never lies. I was sitting in bed writing that night and it had all come out. Well, it's awful when you think all those things about yourself. But it was right. I, I was. I was seething with envy. I was distracted. I was discombobulated. I, I, and it wasn't like it was a really bad week. You know, it, it wasn't the week that I didn't listen to that internal voice that said, Lindy, put oil in the car, Lindy, put oil in the car, Lindy, put oil. And I ignored it and I blew up a perfectly good car outside of whoop whoop. Well, it was actually Woolgoogoo actually, um, in the pouring rain with only 5% left on the battery in my phone. No, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad a week, but it was just like a duh week. You know, a distracted, discontent, discombobulated week where nothing seemed to be going right. So I threw down my journal and I reached for Rumi's good advice. This being human is a guest house with every day a new arrival. A joy, a depression, some meanness. A momentary awareness comes as an unexpected guess. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they be a crowd of sorrows that violently sweep your house empty of furniture. Still, honour each one, for he may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes, for each has been sent as a guide from beyond. That was Rumi's wise words. And I thought, was I greeting my emotions like honoured house guests? No. It wasn't a warm, cosy, guest house in my internal insides. No, it was awful. I mean, I had them there on the lounge and I was treating them terribly, you know. Oh. But I got out of bed and I walked to the shower and I was thinking, my poor emotions. I'm supposed to treat them like honoured house guests, but I hadn't been doing that. There was no welcome mat. There was no cup of tea and shortbread, no. There was none of that. I, they were, oh, it was ugly. The scene inside me was ugly. It wasn't a warm, cosy guest house with a nice floral lounge and, and the teapot. No, it was ugly, really ugly. And then I realized my internal guest house wasn't a guest house at all. It was an American chat show. <laughs> it was, you know, it was one of those shows where they parade all the poor unfortunate people with their bad and sad stories in front of a live audience to ridicule and millions of people at home to, 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 to ridicule them too. And, and as I walked to the shower, I realised, oh my God, those poor people. Can you imagine what it'd be like to be a guest on that show and have all the studio audience and all those millions of people at home casting judgment on you and hating you. Well, I jumped into the shower and you know, who does the best contemplation in the shower? Yeah, good. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about my guest house in the shower and I thought, well, they're, they're on the Jerry Springer lounge in my internal landscape. There, 
sat distracted. And distracted with, well, I tried, you know, distracted just kept getting up and moving every time I tried to talk to him. <laughs> so I, I took a roll call of who was actually visiting that day. And there, there was distracted and couldn't get any sense out of him. And then I, and I looked and there, slap bang in the middle of the lounge with manspread <laughs> was Sloth. Now, Sloth had on a big baggy black t-shirt, it was all stained. He had on tatty moccasins and he had tracky dacks halfway down his ass. And he was sitting there on the lounge, and then, and then sitting on the edge of the, uh, right at the very edge of the lounge, perched there was Impatience. And Impatience, well, she was perched on the end, her foot was tapping up and down, and she was strolling through her phone looking at Game of Thrones spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> and on the other chair, all by herself, was Envy. She was lean and mean and green, and she had this hungry look on her face, and everybody was giving her a wide berth. In the other chair, wearing beige shoes, very sensible, plaid skirt, uh, twin set, pearls. She had a perpetually screwed up face, was judgment. She looked like she'd been smelling something bad. <laughs> and last but not least, in my internal Jerry Springer show, there was the Punisher. Now, hands up if you've seen Matilda, the movie. Yes. You know the homicidal uh, school principal. The thick-set woman with the long socks and the safari suit and the big cane. That was the Punisher. And that's what my Jerry Spr internal Jerry Springer look show looked like. And I was standing in the shower thinking, oh, I don't want my inside to look like a Jerry Springer show. Those poor, those poor people on the Jerry Springer show, I mean, they can't be all bad. They must have some redeeming qualities. And as I got out of the shower, I thought, well, I wonder if my emotions have any redeeming qualities. They can't be all bad. So I made a big pot of tea and I broke out the shortbread. And I sat down in my lounge room and I talked to my emotions. And I asked them about themselves. And well, Sloth said that, uh, that he was inviting me to drop all pretenses, to drop the mask, to drop the show, and to just be my authentic, daggy self. And he can really chill. He just takes a chill pill and he's relaxed. So he was inviting me to just to relax and chill. And, well... Impatience. She said that she was there to give me get up and go when I really needed it because she had lots of energy. And distracted, well, distracted show her, showed a distinct inclination uh, for multitasking, which would come in handy. And Envy, uh, Envy said she was simply there to show me all that I already was and all that I already had. And judgment, when I finally sat down with judgment and gave her a cup of tea and a shortbread, her face softened and she said she was discernment. And then there was the Punisher. And I looked over at the Punisher and she'd had quite a few sugars in her cup of tea. <laughs> and she took that big cane, she put it between her big, thick, set legs and she started galloping around the lounge room, around and around, hooping and hollering as she went and then she reached into that safari suit pocket and she bought out lemon sherbies and she began throwing them all around the house. And you know, with that cane between her legs and not in her hand, she turned into the best motivator I'd ever seen. And I realised, well, that was really good. I, I don't want my internal life to be a Jerry Springer show. I want my internal life to be warm and, and welcoming and, and I don't want to laugh at my emotions. I want to laugh with my emotions and I want to build each other up and support each other and exalt 
each other. So if my internal life is going to have a TV show metaphor, my internal life is the Ellen DeGeneres show. <laughs> because Ellen builds people up and she is so happy. And you know what? I think if Rumi was alive today, that he and Ellen would get along like that. And I think that if he actually knew Ellen DeGeneres, he'd probably put an extra couple of lines in his poem. He'd say something like, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. And then do a funky little Ellen dance all around the lounge room. <laughs> Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. <laughs> <laughs>